Welcome back. Now, the University of Cape Town Summer School has hosted a public lecture by renowned anti-apartheid leader and UK minister, uh, Lord Peter Hayne. He's spoken about 50 years of campaigning against corruption and building a new future. He also exposed global complicity in uh, state capture. Now, just some background on Lord Hayne. He was born and schooled in South Africa. His South African parents were jailed, banned and forced into exile during the freedom struggle. Once in the UK, Hayne led anti-apartheid campaigns to stop all white South African sports tours. Our senior reporter, Aisha Ismail, attended the lecture and joins us live from our Cape Town studios. Aisha, so we know that uh, Lord uh, Peter Hayne was uh, received by those who attended, and rather, who was he received by those attended? I'm sure it was quite an interesting lecture, given his history and what he fought for. It was very interesting, Heidi, but I have to say that um, Lord Peter Hayne speaks from a white perspective. Hmm. And the people, the audience that he addressed was also predominantly white. And I can safely say that most of them were over 50. But because of his experience as an anti-apartheid campaigner, a lot of them asked him questions about you know what can be done to save south africa can south africa be saved and they wanted questions they, they asked him questions and they wanted answers from him and as i said because of his background and it was interesting also when he talked about the fact that a lot of people congratulated him when he exposed global um, complicity in um, state capture and looting. But at the same time, he said that there are still some people who harbor ill feelings against him for preventing um, South African, all white South African um, tours um, involving um, sports code, different sports codes from touring the UK during the dark days of apartheid. And he says he always has to say to them that, you know, it, the struggle against um, apartheid and the struggle now is still the same. But this is what he had to say to his audience at UCT today. But the values fighting state corruption today are exactly the same values as fighting apartheid 50 years ago, I politely replied. And my theme today is on the business complicity with state capture and for state capture. Blame for the infamous Zupta state capture decade is mainly focused upon a corrupt president and his cronies. But both South African and global businesses were culpable too. It took and still takes two to tango. SARS would not have been disabled without Bain and Company infamously and unlawfully carrying out President Zuma's personal instructions at 17 one-to-one -one meetings with him in his private residence, not even his office where there would have been an official record. Nor could the Guptas have money laundered billions out of the country without global banks like HSBC, Standard Chartered, and Bank of Baroda enabling them to do so. And that sorry story continues to this day, with ministers and local councillors still wanting backhanders to dispense procurement contracts, to grant licenses, and so on, to companies eager for the work and willing to pay. It's high time, I believe, that the business community owned up and ostracized anybody still playing that game. Because if that happened, the corrupt politicians and their officials would have their looting massively curbed. So Aisha, it's quite interesting. We were playing some of those uh, visuals of the audience. Uh, but maybe just tell us about what he had to say about the current state of South Africa. I mean, he speaks about uh, recent state capture, but did he have anything to say about the current state? Well, of course, the questions that came out again was that, you know, how, what can we do to save South Africa? And he was saying that, and he talked again about the days of apartheid, and he said where 
people now need to organize like they did during apartheid they need to mobilize that they did during apartheid they need to form a united democratic movement like they did during apartheid to overthrow the apartheid regime and so that's what people need to do now they need to get together they can't just sit back and watch the rot unfold in front of their eyes and what's interesting is that not a single person in that audience talked about a mass exodus or talked about leaving South Africa. They wanted um, answers from him as to how they can help to save the current South Africa. And that was one of the questions that came up. And he is of the opinion that while South Africa can be saved, it cannot be done in its current shape and form. He says that people must be held accountable, those who are involved in corruption, those who are involved in state capture must be arrested and brought before a court of law. But this is how he responded to his audience. You won't change this country unless you do it yourselves. Politicians won't do it for you. They become too comfortable in power too dependent on its privileges. They have a vested interest not to change some of them. Once politicians start looting, it becomes an addiction. They become political alcoholics, political drug addicts. They can't and they won't stop doing it. You, the people of South Africa, are once again to rise up and resist the civil society, firmly standing together and saying, enough is enough. To reclaim the democracy and the ideals of the freedom struggle to kick out corrupt politicians and their officials, and be careful not to replace them with the even more corrupt and authoritarian populists, whether from right or left, within and outside the ANC, who claim dishonestly that they're fighting for a radical form of economic transformation, transformation for themselves, not for everyone. Beware also of those hankering after old white privilege. Interesting insights there. Thank you so much for that update. That was our senior reporter, Aisha Ismail.